In the coming years, the global economy will face its most severe financial headwinds since the end of World War II. And what Robert learned generally, because it's his whole fascination, why are some people rich and some people poor? However, by 2022, the disparity between the wealthy and the poor has widened. Currently, it's wider than the Grand Canyon and continuing to expand. Welcome to the Investing Wise Academy, a channel where aspiring millionaires and billionaires can learn how to invest wisely. In this video, we're going to talk about Robert Kiyosaki's warning about what will happen this August. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe to see more videos like this. Let's get started. During the late 1990s, when everything was in a dot-com bubble and companies were valued at $1 billion, there was a boom in these kinds of investments. Although the internet was the wave of the future, most internet businesses eventually failed. Perhaps Bitcoin and Ethereum will prevail and establish themselves as viable alternatives sooner or later. What they'll be used for exactly is beyond our comprehension. According to Robert, it's unclear to him whether cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin will serve primarily as a medium of exchange or as a means of storing value digitally. He has no idea what role it will play, but he expects it to develop similarly to the bursting of the dot-com bubble. As the Federal Reserve scrambles to combat surging inflation with a 75% basis point increase in interest rates announced just a couple of days ago, experts are increasingly warning that a recession looks inevitable. Firms on Wall Street are advising clients to weather the storm by investing in utilities and consumer staples. Two sectors with relatively stable margins, cash flow, and dividends. While some authorities are saying that property is the best place to hide, others are saying that only gold and silver will save them. Rebel capitalist show host George Gannon agreed with Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki on these issues. The major financial crisis facing the global economy was discussed by Robert Kiyosaki and George Gannon. American businessman and investor George Edward Gammon. At the age of 38, George was already a seasoned business owner, but he decided to take a break and instead devote his time to real estate, where he has successfully renovated and flipped 40% of properties both in and outside of the United States. He recently narrowed his real estate focus to Madeleine, Colombia and now manages a multi-million dollar portfolio built on the premise of purchasing foreclosed homes, fixing them up and then selling or renting them. So if you are seeking a secure retreat, it is important to hear what these people have to say on the subject. Unfortunately, if they don't see the world as it is, they'll accept whatever solutions are presented to them by politicians and central planners. They accept it at face value without question. For the most part, taxing the wealthy is all that needs to be done to close the income gap. We'll take everything from the wealthy, give it to the politicians who will inevitably steal it and then give what's left to the needy, and that will help close the income gap. Nonetheless, as Margaret Thatcher warned, that would only ensure that everyone was equally impoverished. Our goal is to increase the wealth of the middle class and the poor. The lack of financial literacy among the general public is the root cause, and it's something you've been harping on about for the past three decades at least. They believe that the only way to make up the difference is to take away resources from another group. And in free market capitalism, that pie keeps growing, and that improves the quality of life for the people at the bottom, so we can't lose sight of that. You probably already know what happens with financial plans, but just so you know, it's crucial to understand that these planners play a trick on you by only showing you charts dating back to 1981. 
which is when Paul Volcker first started raising interest rates. Since then, interest rates have been falling, and you can claim that the stock market will always rise when rates are falling. But what will happen when interest rates inevitably rise again? Moreover, this period of time typically lasts between 30 and 40 years. Thus, if you look at stock market charts beginning in 1927 and ending in 1980 or 1981, you will see that after adjusting for inflation, the market was relatively flat throughout the entire time period. The thing is, they don't tell you that. Instead, to make money, they selectively provide you with the information they think you want to hear. But what's even worse is that the last crash was in 2008, when the repo market turned and all that other nonsense happened. Financial advisors and real estate agents alike tend to be ignorant of anything but a rising market. We haven't accomplished anything since 2008. In addition, the return of joyous times has been reinsured by the continuous reduction of interest rates. The value of stocks, bonds, and homes all increased. Even so, as we were just discussing with Ralph Powell, the issue with that is that when the bull ascends the staircase, the bear descends through the window. According to Raoul Paul, four months is all it takes for this bear to disappear through the glass. In addition, Robert hopes that by sharing his story, he can inspire some readers to reframe the way they view property and other assets. According to him, once he stopped working, his first priority was to figure out how to make ends meet on a monthly basis. Consequently, how can he increase his income to meet these expenses? This means, Robert said that he will never be able to properly deplete his savings. He thinks it sounds easy, it sounds commonsensical, but very few people just kind of connect the dots and realize that if they can generate enough cash flow with their portfolio to cover their monthly expenses, they will be financially secure. When you have $10,000 in monthly income, $7,000 in monthly expenses, and $3,000 in net income, you have escaped the rat race and are financially independent. Robert also said that it's great to take advice from Dalio and the other incredibly bright men in the room, but they're all stock guys. Everyone advises having a diversified stock, bond, and mutual fund portfolio. Robert is the founder and CEO of a public company. His entire company is under his control as he is the sole shareholder and then they get income from 13,000 or 14,000 rental units with zero equity in them, all debt. This is where they make the majority of their money. Furthermore, they do not pay any taxes and instead put their money into oil wells rather than oil companies. He said that he liked Biden for about 20 minutes before he took the Keystone Excel pipeline and the price of oil skyrocketed from $30 a barrel to $130 a barrel, a 400% increase in one day. However, the problem is that higher oil prices lead to higher fuel and food prices, which will destroy the poor and middle class because a larger share of their income goes towards those things that are going up in price. They also want to levy a tax on danger. But there aren't enough wealthy people to do it. No one here bothers to pay taxes. That's the problem with the argument. According to Robert, more money is not the answer to inflation. Inflation or rising prices for consumers typically results from that. Adding more products to the market is the solution to rising prices for consumers. You need to crank out more goods, raise oil output, it's counterproductive to target those who are actually creating something for taxation. Consider China's recent deals with Saudi Arabia as well as what will probably be agreements with Russia and Yuan. Many would simply dismiss it as the dollar's decline, but that would be missing the point. So, before that could take place, based on Robert's statement, China would need dollars to buy the food or commodities. It was essential that they obtain oil, that's why they had to get a job to make ends meet. 
That's why they're selling us Walmart merchandise. They need our money to buy oil. Therefore, they are in a very precarious position there. In contrast, if they begin to conduct these transactions in new one for oil, suddenly they can print the currency to purchase the oil. You see, they don't have to work for it. That, however, means that the United States no longer has the same degree of influence over China as it once did. Because of this, China can take its time getting started. Not immediately, but they can start telling the US to go to hell. Where else can we get what we need if not from China? That begs the question, where do we get it? If you can get our hands on it at all, it's going to cost us a fortune. You can rule the masses by dictating what they eat. One can rule nations by controlling their energy supply. And as the saying goes, money is the root of all evil. According to Rothschild, as long as the money is in my hands, I don't care who makes the rule. As we see it, that is one of their goals. That's $2,000 in pure gold and silver, or the equivalent in modern currency. The value of this is close to $35, and this has kept its value over the last 5,000 years, which is of paramount importance. This tiny gold coin has the same purchasing power it did 5,000 years ago. In the late 1990s, when everything was a dot-com and companies were being valued at $1 billion or more, everyone was doing it. Actually, the internet was the way of the future. Contrary to popular belief, not every single one of these businesses makes it. Also, crypto is probably going to follow the same pattern. Someday, perhaps, Bitcoin and Ethereum will emerge victorious, and by then, we'll still be here. What they'll be used for exactly is beyond our comprehension. In the case of Bitcoin, according to Robert, he can't tell if they will serve as a medium of exchange or as a medium in which to store value. However, he suspects it will mirror the bursting of the dot-com bubble in the 1990s. That's all for today. What are your thoughts on Robert Kiyosaki's dire warning? Join the conversation in the comments section below. Please click the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.